Susan Page is the Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief for USA Today. She joins me now from Washington. All right, Susan, so let's begin with the issue of gun control, specifically the push to ban bump stocks. We've heard a growing number of Republicans are open to this idea. Is there a sense that Congress will act on this? You know, it was interesting on Face the Nation this morning, Wayne LaPierre, the head of the NRA and an elusive figure, uh, came out and refused to endorse legislation to ban bump stocks. He said he wanted to see the ATF do it administratively. It is not clear uh, if the ATF feels it has the authority to regulate these bump stocks on their own. But uh, but despite the this, this worst shooting in modern American history, and despite the support of some Republican legislators, the NRA continues to be resistant to the idea of more legislation. And he expressed the concern that it would become a Christmas tree, that is, that it would become a vehicle for talking about other forms of gun control. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what effect the NRA's position has on some of those Republicans who said that they were perhaps open to it. On another topic, Susan, the president criticized outgoing Republican Senator Bob Corker this morning, tweeting, quote, and this is lengthy, bear with me so we can recap all of it for our viewers. Senator Bob Corker begged me to endorse him for re-election in Tennessee. I said no when he dropped out. He also wanted to be my Secretary of State. I said, no thanks. He is also largely responsible for the horrendous Iran deal. Hence, I would fully expect Corker to be a negative voice and stand in the way of our great agenda. Didn't have the guts to run. Now, Senator Corker responded in his own way here. He said, it's a shame the White House has become an adult daycare center. Someone obviously missed their shift this morning. So Susan, Senator Corker is certainly not pulling any punches. He has 15 months to go until he retires. What kind of problems could he pose potentially for President Trump? This is just these are just extraordinary exchanges <laughs> on a Sunday morning on a public forum like to, between a Republican president and the Republican chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee who are going to have to work together for another 15 months. And judging from Senator Corker's response on Twitter, he now feels, I think, uh, liberated to mm -hmm. criticize the president uh, in more direct ways than he ever has before. before. Senator Corker is not really um, a guy who is always out there criticizing uh, other Republicans. He's not a, he doesn't have a reputation as a kind of maverick that say John McCain is, mm -hmm. but these are extraordinary exchanges and they raise, they're gonna, they could have the potential to raise some serious problems for the White House as they try to get Congress to work with them, with the White House on things like the Iran deal, even on other policies like tax policy or health care. Uh, the president is not making friends with some very powerful Republican figures on Capitol Hill. Yeah, I think it's um, striking because, as you know, I mean, for some people, Senator Corker is not somebody who is known <laughs> as being a particular, you know, uh, flamethrower, uh, if you will, in Congress. And so all the more reason why his remarks seem that much more pointed. All right. And another topic, Susan, the president on Saturday said he has a good relationship with Rex Tillerson, the secretary of state, but wished Tillerson could be, quote, tougher sometimes. <laughs> How is their dynamic impacting the administration's approach to foreign policy? You know, I think their dynamic continues to be pretty toxic. Uh, it is hard to imagine. Uh, I, I tell you, the conventional wisdom in Washington is that Rex Tillerson is on his way out as Secretary of State, perhaps soon, perhaps not until the end of the year. But at some point, it's hard to imagine these two uh, figures continuing to, to work together. They differ on some policies, but there's also seems to be a real lack of respect from from one to the other. And this at a time when we are facing some big foreign policy challenges, this escalate, escalating rhetoric with North Korea is one thing. Also, we expect the president to announce this week that he is going to throw to Congress uh, possible changes to the Iran nuclear deal. There is a lot happening in the world, and we have a secretary of state who rather publicly has been rebuked by his president. Hmm. Meanwhile, the president is reaching out to Democrats in an effort to find a path forward on health care. The president called Senator Chuck Schumer to talk about that. Should Republicans be worried? You know, it's. Uh, I think the president is a lonely figure uh, as we speak this on this Sunday uh, in that he's got uh, problems with Republicans on Capitol Hill. Democrats uh, who are would be willing to cut a deal on something like the Dreamers program on DACA, I think are going to be unwilling to cut a deal on health care unless it is to explicitly strengthen the Affordable Care Act. And it is hard to imagine that President Trump, who ran against the Affordable Care Act, promised to repeal it as soon as he became president, is going to agree to a deal that strengthens it. So it, I think that uh, 
folks in Washington do not see the potential for a deal to be made between Democrats and the White House on this particular issue. Other issues, maybe so, maybe on a tax bill. Health care is a tough one. The partisan divide is just too gaping. Mm. Finally, Susan, the president still has not clarified his reference to a calm before the storm during a military gathering. Is there a working theory, a theory about what it is that he's alluding to? Well, I think the uh, the working there there is there is no knowledge. There is speculation about <laughs> right. what he means, and I think the two most likely ones are as you think about North Korea, because it's a time when the rhetoric with North Korea continues to get hotter. The second theory is that he wasn't talking about anything; that he was saying something uh, that uh, sounded pretty dramatic without anything in particular in mind, and that we should wait and see. We don't really have much choice but to wait and see until the president clarifies what it was he meant. All right, Susan Page in Washington, with whom I did not coordinate outfits today, by the way. <laughs> Susan, thank you so much. Thank you.